What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and now that the release of Operation Steel Wave for Rainbow Six Siege is only a matter of days, well, maybe weeks, okay, at worst, months away, I thought it would be a good idea to present a final recap and demonstration of all of the major gameplay changes coming to the game next season. Timestamps to the individual topics will be in the description and pinned comment below, and maybe some of you will even see the different sections highlighted in the scroll bar at the bottom of the video. This is a really cool new YouTube feature, although it does seem to be a little temperamental at the moment in terms of who gets to see it, but one way or another, the timestamps are there should you wish to use them. And with that, let's go! One of the operators that is getting a pretty major injection of fun next season is Amaru. Since her introduction during Ember Rise, Amaru's pick rates have been pretty poor, and maybe that's not surprising given her background as an anti-terror anthropologist. Wait, what? Guys, the, the script says she's an anti-terror anthropologist? Okay? Uh, whatever you say. Well, given that she is an anthropologist, it kind of makes sense that she's not really brought that much value to Team Rainbow. But with the start of next season, this old bird may yet develop a bit of a bite. Her grappling hook ability is being buffed with a whole number of little tweaks that should make Amaru more fun to play and also help her performance a little. The range of her hookshot and the grapple speed remains the same, but when she attacks through a window, her ability will be far less predictable than it used to be. Instead of breaking the barricade at the beginning of the grapple, she now won't actually open it up until she comes bursting through, which can be really useful if you manage to land on top of an unsuspecting defender because getting kicked in the head by a Maru will still instantly take out an enemy. On top of that, she will soon be able to ready her gun a full 200 milliseconds faster than before. For the G8 LMG, the times will be 700 milliseconds after passing through the window instead of the previous 900 milliseconds, and other guns will be even faster. In our testing, we discovered that both the primary and secondary shotguns will be another 200 milliseconds faster than the LMG, and if you grapple while wielding the SMG-11, you can even get up to a 300 millisecond advantage over the G8. Pretty good to know if you really want to surprise your opponents. But wait, there's more! Smashing straight through closed barricades and being able to shoot much quicker are not the only tweaks. With the next season, Amaru will also be able to grapple straight through unreinforced hatches, which is better than having to shotgun them open first, but I do have to mention that hatches will still be a little bit more risky to use than windows. Firstly, even though you can grapple through a closed hatch, the hatch is opened as your hook grips on, so you will not have quite the same element of surprise as you would with windows. In addition to that, Amaru will not be able to ready her gun any quicker after hatch grappling in the new season. In every test we ran, the time to bring up the weapon after a hatch grapple was still the same as in Operation Void Edge. The patch notes are a little unclear on what the intention is with hatches. All they say is, faster recovery when landing. But is this only meant to be for windows, or is it supposed to be for hatches too, and the fact that the final stages of the test server still have the same recovery speed as the live build is simply a bug or an oversight? I don't know. It feels odd that we get better recovery for windows, but not for hatches, and if it really is a conscious design choice, then why not highlight something like that in the patch notes? But I guess we will simply have to file this along with all the other mysteries of Siege, like the real meaning of the mobility stat, or the question of why suppressed damage values are wrong for almost every gun in the game. Moving on. This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet, and I'm super happy to be showing off this product today because I've been using one of these for well over a year now. Before then, this is what I used to use, and it's a perfectly decent leather wallet, but even in its current empty state, it is still literally twice the size of the Ridge Wallet. But it's not just the minimalist sleek design that makes these wallets special. They are built from top grade materials such as 6061 T6 aluminium grade 5 titanium or carbon fiber, and because of those high grade materials, the wallets come with a lifetime warranty. But that's not the only high tech thing about them. The Ridge wallet is also 100% RFID blocking to keep your personal data safe. Now, with Father's Day only just around the corner, they have some great bundles on offer. So, if you're 
looking either to upgrade your own personal wallet or if you're looking for a gift, do check out the Ridge wallet at ridge.com slash rogue9. That's ridge.com slash rogue9 and use the code rogue9 at checkout for a 10% discount and free worldwide shipping and returns. There's a link in the description below, so do go ahead and give that a click once you finish the video, of course. A significant change that was not announced in the season's patch notes, but instead only briefly mentioned on the test server subreddit as a bug fix, is that the explosive properties of Fuse's cluster charges are being changed. The patch notes only say, Fixed. Operators can take damage or even die when standing next to a detonating cluster charge, even if they are not in the cluster charge AoE. And that is complete nonsense. The actual reason why players can die on the floor above or below the explosions is exactly because those players are still in the area of effect of the pucks, and because the new shrapnel system allows that damage to travel through the floor or ceiling respectively. And that is the problem that is being fixed. Going forward, Fuse's pucks will no longer do shrapnel damage. The entire shrapnel system has simply been deactivated for this particular gadget. It doesn't matter what kind of soft surface is shielding you, a floor, ceiling or even a wall, after the next patch goes live, all of these obstacles will 100% protect you from the blasts of the pucks. Here is a great example of an enemy hiding behind a soft wall and in the current live build, as you can see, every single explosion will do shrapnel damage and the enemy is taken out, while in the test server build, even though the pucks are landing right next to the wall and the opponent is right on the other side, mere centimeters away, no damage is transferred through at all. All other explosions such as nitrocells and hand grenades will still do shrapnel damage through walls, floors or ceilings exactly as before. See a couple of examples here. It's good to see that this unintentional buff to Fuse, which also made him quite dangerous to use, is finally getting fixed, but sadly, explosions in Rainbow Six are still a bit of a challenge for the devs to deal with, and so as simple as the fix to Fuse is, it is still not perfect, because it can still happen that Fuse himself takes damage from his own charges, as you can see in this example here. My theory is that this happens when a puck manages to get a direct line of sight onto Fuse directly through the hole that the launcher bores into the soft surface before firing out the pucks. It's a bit unfortunate that this can still happen, but I guess as long as you move a little bit away from the hole, you should be pretty safe once the new patch goes live. Another significant change to the game is the addition of a new secondary gadget for defenders. The long-rumored proximity alarm is finally coming to the game and it will essentially function similar to an Elamine or maybe Wamai's magnets. You can throw it and it will attach to any surface and after that it will have a certain area of effect and will beep angrily at any attacker that gets too close. Functionally, it will act similar to barbed wire in that it can be used as an early warning system to cover your back against sneaky crouch walking attackers. Interestingly, this new device is not only added to the main operators, but it also becomes part of the primary gadget choices for the defensive recruits and the deployable shield is switched over to the group of secondary gadgets instead. Finally, for reference, these are the operators that will get access to the alarm and which gadgets they will be losing. Stun effects can be quite weird and confusing in Rainbow Six with a lot of different operators inflicting a lot of different and sometimes complex stuns, and so to simplify things a bit, Echo, Zofia and Ella will be seeing some changes to how their gadgets affect opponents. The stun effect of the two Polish sisters has always been unique in the game as the only effect that reduces the target's aim sensitivity, and while everything about being stunned is kind of frustrating, not being able to aim properly for a few seconds is super duper annoying, and so this is the part of the effect that will be removed with Operation Steel Wave. All other components of the effect stay as they are. You will still see double, you will still see floating lights, you will still get a dark vignette around your screen and you will still experience a significant reduction in movement speed. 
When it comes to Echo, his stun effect is also being simplified, but you could argue that his changes add up to an overall buff rather than a nerf. Up until now, what made Echo so confusing to play against for newer players was that the effect of his stun became more intense the faster you moved, and this will be simplified with the new season. The main change to Echo stun is that players will no longer experience the drunken camera sway while moving, and that the duration of the stun is now fixed. Up until now, the audio effects only lasted about 4.5 seconds while standing still, but up to 10 seconds while running. The dark vignette and double vision lasted 6 seconds while standing or running, but you also had up to 8.5 seconds of camera sway only while running. From the next season onwards, the audio effect will always be 10 seconds, no matter how you move, and that is a bit of a buff to Echo. Also, your double vision and vignette will last around 8.5 seconds, which again is longer than it used to be. In addition to that, you can also notice that the black vignette around the screen has been standardized, which means that it will become a bit more intense while standing still, but it will no longer grow while moving, so it's a bit worse in one way, but a bit better in another. The only nerf to Echo Stun is that the drunken camera roll effect while running is being removed completely, so the bottom line is that Echo Stun has been standardized, but most of the changes are now actually a bit worse than before. And finally, there are a whole bunch of simpler changes next season that will benefit or maybe harm a variety of characters. And why don't we start out straight away with Echo again, because he is also losing his deployable shield and instead getting access to impact grenades. I think most players agree that this is not only a nerf, but also a bit of an odd choice. Echo's real value during the match, especially during the final stages of a round, is being able to operate his yokai drones, and so a viable tactic with him has always been to anchor somewhere safely near sight, hiding behind his shield and only fighting when he absolutely has to. As annoying as the reworked shield can be at high level play, if there was any defender in the entire game for whom it made sense to have a shield due to the role his or her main gadget forced them into, it would have been Echo. No, but there it is. His shield is being removed in the near future whether we like it or not. Clash's SPSMG9 is having the red dot in its sight switched to the reflex scope's green triangle. The devs don't give a reason for this, but a quick test shows that ever since Operation Grim Sky, Clash has been suffering from sight misalignment and that shots land slightly low with the red dot, so my theory is that the new reticle is simply chosen to fix this issue. And this will not only affect Clash, because with Steel Wave, the SPSMG9 is also being made available for Kali in exchange for the P22 Mark V pistol. Speaking of Kali, besides getting access to the SPSMG9, she is also getting a couple of micro buffs, and when I say micro, I really mean tiny. The fuse timer of her explosive lance is being reduced from 2.5 seconds after boring in to 1.5 seconds. This won't really improve anything against static defenses, but I guess it will make bandit tricking a bit harder. Her final change is a reduction in the vertical recoil of her CSRX sniper rifle. On paper, this sounds quite useful, but here's the thing. Her reset time will still be the same as before, and you're still going to lose sight of your target after each shot, even on the smaller zoom factor. I guess maybe you could argue that your target will be unsighted for just a little bit less than before, but I personally don't see this having any real effect on the usability of her rifle. This is still going to be a really challenging gun to handle. 
Finca has been one of the consistently best performing attackers in Rainbow Six Siege season after season, and so of course the logical thing to do is to buff her. On the live servers right now, getting revived by her nano boost gives you 5 HP plus an additional temporary 20 HP. Even before the 20 HP boost runs out, this 25 HP in most cases is not enough to survive even a single hit from any weapon. So with the new season, Finca will now be able to revive players for 30 HP plus the time limited 20 HP boost, and that on the other hand is enough to survive at least one hit from most weapons in the game. After several nerfs many seasons ago, Kaid and Nomad's 44 mag has become quite difficult to handle and won't do nearly as much damage as it used to, and the chances of survival for most players when their primary weapon runs out of ammo are pretty low. So in order to help both characters out a bit, the devs are giving them access to one alternative sidearm each. With the new season, Kaid will get access to the French LFP586 revolver, and Nomad will be able to pick the PRB92, which is Capitao's semi-auto pistol. It might be interesting to do a bit of a loadout meta review comparing the 44 mag to each of these new options, so do keep an eye out on the channel for those in future. Oryx has had a bumpy start to his career on the Team Rainbow roster, significantly underperforming during his first season on the team, and in order to help with that, he is also getting a couple of little tweaks. Running through walls is going to harm the guy less, and he will only take 5 damage instead of 10, and in addition to that, he's going to be set up a bit more for his role as a roamer and offsite ambusher. He is losing his bulletproof camera and getting the brand new proximity alarm instead, and he will also be able to attach an angled grip to his MP5 in future to give him that extra snappy ADS time so that he can engage opponents more quickly after bursting through a wall or jumping up through a hatch. And finally, last but definitely not least for console players, a change that went live for the PC version of the game all the way back in April is that Ying is finally losing her recently added bonus Candela for console 2. It turns out that the buff she got last season was a bit too much, and the following nerf has just taken a bit longer to be activated on consoles, most likely due to the current worldwide health situation. And that is it, a brief rundown of all of the important gameplay changes coming to the game with Steel Wave. I will be following up with loads of loadout meta videos to assess the new weapon options that many of the characters are getting, so if you're interested in that and not yet subscribed to the channel, now is as good a time as ever. And while you're down there, leaving a like is free and each one gives me that little boost of endorphins that keeps me going while being locked down for months on end, so do feel free to leave a like as well. And with that, as always, many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next episode.